Will changes be permanente at one of California's top medical centers? And who knew that juries could make you give an apology as part of their verdict? Spoiler alert, I did. I'm Erica Domingo, and this is a Toxic Workplace Report. So let's dive right in. Kaiser Permanente is a national healthcare system based in California and one of that state's largest employers. But what did they do to cost them almost $19 million in settlements to black, Hispanic, and Latino employees? They paid those employees less than their white counterparts and created an environment where they were not able to advance in the workplace. While Kaiser Permanente denied the allegations in both lawsuits, they resolved the claims brought on behalf of over 2,000 black employees for $11.5 million and the claims brought on behalf of over 2,500 Latinx employees for $7.4 million. The company also agreed to institute comprehensive programs to increase pay equity and create opportunities for advancement for black, indigenous, and people of color. In addition, Kaiser Permanente agreed to conduct an annual pay analysis for the next three years and to install an internal compliance officer to oversee that analysis. While the monetary settlements reached in these two cases turn out to be about a few thousand dollars per plaintiff, the hope is that the policies and procedures being put in place by Kaiser Permanente will help those employees achieve pay equity in the future and make them whole going forward. In Colorado, one former basketball coach is celebrating his big W with a great assist from the jury who awarded him over $2.5 million in his wrongful termination suit. The lawsuit brought by William Harris, a black former assistant basketball coach, alleged that he was thrown under the team bus by the head coach and the commissioner of the Colorado High School Activities Association. Harris's lawsuit stems from the decision to allow a transfer student to practice with his team before the transfer was approved by the association. We talking about practice. Despite Harris doing everything by the book, the head coach allowed the student to not only practice but to play in games, which drew criticism within the league. Harris was then used as a sacrificial lamb, with his employment terminated so that the school would be allowed back into competition by the association. In a pretrial submission, the attorney for Harris stated, while the facts in this case are unique, the overarching discriminatory treatment is not. A group of white men in positions of power, all of whom violated the rules and several of whom even admit to doing so, work together to blame a black man who they know did nothing but whom they believe is powerless to fight back. The $2.5 million jury verdict included $200,000 for Harris's economic losses, as well as $1.3 million for his emotional distress and a million dollars in punitive damages against the association. I'm no professional athlete, but by all accounts, that win was a slam dunk. Race discrimination cases are notoriously hard to prove, but in a situation like this where you have white supervisors admitting to wrongdoing and facing no consequences, it seems the jury had no choice but to find in Harris's favor on this one. That's it for this week's TWR, but wait, there's more. This week, we can also bring you the TWR. From our friends at Custom Inc., you can get your own limited edition Toxic Workplace Report t-shirt. Just drop a comment below and let us know which episode of the Toxic Workplace Report has been your favorite. And be sure to let us know your size too. We're gonna pick a handful of winners. Thanks for watching and be sure to catch the next one. Also, I'm a lawyer, right? Like, we, we, I actually practice law, too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I write silly quips and great legal briefs.